Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. Hope everyone had a, a wonderful weekend out there. Kind of uneventful, uneventful here on my end. Uh, not a whole lot going on. It is uh, 10, 11 p.m. California time here, October 26, 2025. Halloween getting uh, pretty close. Latest activity here on the globe shows a 1.4 up into the Alaska area. Uh, still getting a pretty good cluster of movement out here across the Indonesia area, the Philippines, all up and down the Java Trench as well. Keep an eye on this region specifically. Uh, I mean, I could pretty much draw an area that you're seeing here on the globe of uptick uh, where we could see some larger activity. Watching areas up around the Nankai Trough, Philippines potentially as well around the Manila Trench. Just pretty active out here in the last uh, couple weeks. Also, some further movement out here in the uh, eastern, southeastern Pacific. Got a 5.1 stirring up here and a little bit of activity up along the Prue Chile Trench. Let's take a look here at the uh, west coast, see what's going on out here. Uh, as far as earthquake activity goes, 2.5 model. Well, that brings up, uh, well, it looks like we had a few of those today above the 2.6 or 2.5 level. Um, in fact, all of these look like they are from today. 3.5 up in the Northern California earlier today. Number of twos, uh, man, just rocking and rolling out here along the West Coast. Nothing big going on yet, but uh, we got to be on guard. Even some activity northwest here of Los Angeles near the Santa Paula area. 2.8 stirring up on, uh, looks like one of these uh, thrust faults up there in the mountains. A lot of crunching going on out there, so to speak, uh, with the strain and stress. Even the Malibu Coast Fault here is showing a little bit of activity, it looks like, or maybe off of that. Uh, one to the south, maybe one underneath Los Angeles as well, associated with the uh, uh, Puente Hills Thrust Fault. Either way, you know, a lot of activity stirring up out here all over the place in Southern California. It's just not limited to one region. That's a bad sign here that things are uh, increasing in pressure when we start to see uh, elevated activity there. 3.1 Johannesburg area, that was this morning. Uh, Nothing big. Like I said, nothing big going on yet, but we do need to be on guard here, folks. Uh, some further activity there. Actually, that was limited this morning in between the Hayward Fault and the uh, uh, portion of the Concord Fault there. A couple two stirring up this morning. Uh, Clear Lake Volcanic Field, that's just geothermal fields up there. Nothing new. Not a volcano getting ready to blow. That's just what happens there when you create some energy in the uh, geothermal fields. So there's a 3.5 earlier this afternoon, also 2.1. Pretty shallow crustal quakes going on up here. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the uh, Cascadia trimmer counts here real quick, see what we have. Only nine. Everything's coming to a halt here in terms of trimmer activity after a pretty decent uh, last month or so of uh, slow slip events, mainly up there across the um, northern area. Uh, just... You know, it's hard to say exactly what things are going to look like pri previous to a big earthquake out here, whether the trimmer counts are way elevated or whether there's an extended period of no slow slip events. You know, it just you never know. This is valuable, valuable information here uh, when it comes to uh, uh, monitoring the slow slip events and see how things behave prior to a big event, because obviously back in 1700 uh, and we, we didn't have all these, um, you know, instruments and whatnot to to watch everything uh, not a whole lot going on up there through Washington for now it is a weekend so if anything did happen as far as smaller quake activity around the volcanoes it'll get added hopefully there around Monday after the um, morning meeting there at the USGS office oil fields still getting hit uh, nothing new out there across the eastern portion of the country for now and uh, like I say things are Got a broad amount of earthquake activity out here all around the place. It's really not confined just to one area. Uh, we got areas, obviously, that are more elevated than the rest of the region here. But, I mean, there's just a lot of activity stirring up out here, even in the Mediterranean region. Got a four-pointer stirring up. Uh, looks like it's around the Mediterranean Sea area. Um, wait a minute. Let me look here and see. That's well off the coast there of, of uh, Italy, so that's going to be roughly in here in the Mediterranean Sea region. A couple other earthquakes out there, some smaller magnitudes. 
uh, all across the plate boundary, it looks like. Nothing big going on, but active. Definitely active conditions here. We've got you know, some moderate to almost some major activity occurring here in the last 24 hours. Of course, the largest magnitude, that's 6.2, down there across the Indonesia area. Still quite a bit of aftershock occurring from that uh, decent size event and still got a lot of activity in general around it even up in the philippines here so do you got to watch the manila trench here on the back side of the philippines that's been under quite a bit of strain here recently crow cam chat cut trench up there getting quite a few fours and whatnot uh, new zealand pretty good cluster going on underneath north island we'll watch things here i feel like we're getting close here i wouldn't doubt it the reason why I say that is because we have a couple different coronal holes about ready to... Well, they are technically facing us right now. We've got a decent size one here, one in the center portion, and one up here as well. So we got three distinct coronal holes out here that uh, shoot out magnetic lines in a straight fashion out from the sun. Uh, they don't loop back in on themselves like they do here for the sunspot. So it seems as though the last few times, every time we got a... A setup like this we start seeing bigger earthquake activity occurring so watch the next couple days here talking about tonight north northward <laughs> tonight further on here over the next two or three days uh, could see some decent uptick we'll have to watch that uh, let's see but far as flaring activity fairly minimal folks there's not a whole lot of flaring going on the sunspots out there are fairly stable not a whole lot of complexity within the sunspots but the chrono holes that's a different story that uh, could stir things up here. We also got a, uh, maybe a G1 class solar storm coming up on the 28th here of October. Maybe tomorrow night there, Monday night into Tuesday night. I uh, might see some uh, aurora conditions out there, but really not uh, expecting anything major. Look at that, B4.5. That's pretty low. All right, uh, let's take a look here at this monster of a hurricane called Melissa. 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 Look at this. Got Jamaica up here getting uh, some strong indications here that it's getting very close to being a Category 5. Well-defined eye wall. Uh, in fact, it looks like it is strengthening. That's going to take a sharp turn to the north right over Jamaica. Uh, if anyone's out there, I, I'm hopefully they can get away from there because this is going to be quite devastating uh, when this goes over land like that uh, a lot of the models here trending up towards the category 5 hurricane level up here before uh, obviously dropping a little bit once it goes over land it loses a little bit of its energy uh, but it is still expected to track north northeastward uh, before weakening and heading out there to the Atlantic but uh, expect potentially the strongest hurricane ever to hit the Jamaica area. Um, so watch that closely. At least the strongest hurricane for them. Not ever, but, you know, just generally speaking here for these folks, not uh, not going to be a good picture there. Hopefully everyone's getting out of harm's way. All right, uh, let's see what we got here. 145 mile per hour sustained winds. Hello. Wow. I can only imagine what the gusts are going up to as well. All right, so what do we got here as far as anything major going on across this area? I know West Coast, we're supposed to get some warmer temperatures out here. There's that hurricane. Uh, not anywhere near the states. Massive low pressure out there across the eastern portion of the country midweek. Going to bring some beneficial rain. Um, oh, man, this is looking good. I like that. Looks like maybe the storm door may be open there across the West Coast a little bit later. If we get, you know, periodic rain once in a while, every week or so, every couple weeks, that is good. Uh, I don't like these consistent high ridges, you know, the pressure building out here across the West Coast. It's not a good way to start off a rainy season. We need uh, precipitation, so hopefully that uh, comes into play. Either way, uh, I see a little bit of snow out there on the map, mainly up in Canada. A little bit here maybe uh, towards the second week of uh, November. We'll have to watch that, though, and check back on it as we get a little bit closer uh, to that time period. Seismograph stations, there's a couple offline, but uh, they'll come back on. They occasionally um, will go offline for a little bit, but they should come back, hopefully. All right, uh, let's see here. But they look pretty quiet for now. Uh, double check here of the earthquake map. Nothing new since I've been talking 
uh, like I say, a lot of uptick out here. You can see the you can see the crunching going on out here with elevated twos and threes all up and down the West Coast. It's not just confined to Southern California right now. It's confined, or not confined, but it's spreading out here uh, about the Cascadia subduction zone southward along the San Andreas Fault and inland. Uh, definitely seeing the pressure increase out here. Just just be on guard. Have a good night. We'll see you guys out here for the Monday morning update. Take care and have a good one.